In today's video, I'm going to be doing a review and a wear test on the Tiny Marvels palette, which is a collaboration between Mel Thompson and Sydney Grace. I know you guys have probably already seen about a dozen or so reviews on this palette. Hopefully mine will bring you a little something different and that is coming from the perspective of a non-makeup artist who just loves to play in makeup and I've had a chance to put every single shade to the test for a full day wear in order to give you the best information on how the palette performs and the color combinations and choices and help you decide if this just may or may not be worth your makeup dollar. So if this sounds like something you're interested in, stick around. We're about to get right into it. Well, hey there, I'm Mona, and this is About Face with Mona. This is a channel geared towards everything for the mature woman. We talk about beauty, skincare, and lifestyle. And today, we're doing something fun. We're playing in color. So I'm gonna review the Tiny Marvels palette, which was a collaboration by Mel Thompson and Sydney Grace. As you can see, I still have my broken shoulder and my torn rotator cuff. And to be honest, editing is still a little bit of a challenge. I can't even use both hands to fix my hair. <laughs> Tiny Marvels was the brainchild of a content creator on YouTube known as Mel Thompson. I will have Mel's link in the description below if by any chance any of you are not familiar with the beautiful Mel Thompson. She does great makeup looks. She is a well-known content creator. She is down to earth. She comes across as warm. And even though I don't know her at all and she doesn't know me, I feel like I know her because her personality is so warm and it really just comes through in her videos. Her so the artistry of this palette was created by Mel's tattoo artist. And then he got his inspiration from Mel's love for tiny creatures and the tattoos that are on Mel. Although I'm not one that goes much for the gimmicky kind of cutesy palettes and trends that come on the market like baking stuff and like dolls or cartoon characters. I'm more into the sleek classic looks. I have to say that I really appreciate this artistry because it's adult creativity. This is really not cutesy. It doesn't really fall into the realm of that. It's, really it's different. The palette is weighty, it is cardboard, but it has a very big mirror, which I'm not gonna blind you with. It has a good snap closure, but it's not too hard to use or to open. And right now, that's much appreciated. Elle chose the colors for this palette, but she used the formula of a company called Sydney Grace. Now, with the exception of one duochrome color in here, which is known as Scarab, all of the other shades are unique to this palette by Sydney Grace. Sydney Grace is an indie brand that has a reputation for putting out stellar quality makeup products. I have other products from Sydney Grace. In fact, I have their lipstick, their blushes, their highlighters. I also have an array of single eyeshadows and a couple of palettes. And I enjoy the quality of all of them. So when I heard that Mel Thompson and Sydney Grace did a collaboration together, I think that has to be a dynamic duo. <laughs> now, these are somewhat typical of an eyeshadow palette's ingredients. However, these are made in the USA, they are cruelty free, and they are vegan. I don't see any ingredient in this list that would throw this into the non-vegan category. So besides ingredients, let's look at the color story. When you look at this color story, it could be a little overwhelming to somebody who is new to makeup or not very skilled in makeup. However, what I've found to be my best advice regarding this is to pick any one of these shades as your point color. So if you want to go with a with the light green or you want to go with the peachy color or you want to go with the mauvey color, you want to go with the pink color, you want to go with the brown color, I would choose that point color and then I would use the other colors in the palette to complement that look. And I think that's where you start. You start with which color is calling your name in the moment. Now we're gonna go ahead and get into the look. And then my final thoughts will be at the end with what I think of the palette 
and we'll also do a comparison of price points. We'll help you decide if you're getting your money's worth or not. So I think this is a very easy palette to use. I am gonna go in on the first eye. We're gonna choose two color stories. I'm gonna go in on the first eye with this color Flutterby. This is a sort of peachy orange color. You're gonna see how quick these are. These carry a lot of pigment with the exception of one shade in the palette. The only shade in the palette that I find does not pack a good punch with pigment is the lavender pastel color called Jewel Bee. And you can build that one up and you can get a beautiful look. It's just not as much payoff as the other shades in the palette. So that's it. I have the peachy color on my eye right now. Let's zoom in just a tiny bit. Let's take you just a little bit closer. Whoa, that's close. Okay, so we're going to take that color, just a simple look, and then I'm going to go in the crease with a brown. We're going to choose the color Walking Stick, which is kind of a neutral brown, in my opinion. All of these shades are creamy. In fact, you'll get a lot of kick up in the pan when you're using them. They almost want to crumble. They're so soft. But what that does is it really helps you blend these out. There's just, that's it. I mean, there's no challenge blending these out whatsoever. Looks can be created in a flash. And the only reason that it's taking me this long is because I'm talking while I'm doing it. There are six shimmers included in this palette. And you have a wide variety to choose from. Since I'm going with the peachy color, I'm kind of, I'm going to take the color Marvel, which you will see in the swatches. And I'm going to pat that over the lid in the center just to give a little focal point. And that's it. I can take this color Web, which is a really good under brow color, and I can pack it right here for a little added punch. And really this by itself is a beautiful everyday look. And very easy, very simple, you're out the door. Okay, on this side, I'm gonna go in with the color Mantis, this green color which I did not even think was a color that I would ever use. And I am enjoying this look a lot. So I'm gonna take this Mantis and I'm gonna pack it on my lid. Another thing about these shades is all of the colors play well with other colors. When you wanna blend them out, they don't muddy up. They combine and they work over each other. They work in combination with each other and they play really nicely together. So that's it, that's that shade. Now I am gonna go in with a darker color. I'm gonna go in with this color Spider. This is probably the darkest shade in the palette. And I'm gonna just take that and I'm gonna tap it into my outer V. This is a beautiful outer V color, and the other outer V color that I really like is the color Bugaboo, which is like a deep burgundy color. That color is probably my favorite color in the palette. I have some wrinkles right here, so it kind of caught in them a little bit. I'm just going to blend that out just a little bit, just so you don't have any harsh edges. The other positive about this palette, the quality of Sydney Grace's colors are so good that when you blend them out, they blend out like a dream. It is definitely not difficult to smudge your corners and not have harsh lines, but at the same time, you're not blending away all of your color. So it really catches that sweet spot in the middle, which I really appreciate. Okay, now I'm going to go in with one of the really fun colors in the palette, and that is this color Scarab. Scarab is a duochrome. And it really catches... I can't bring this closer to you guys, but you'll see it on the swatches, and it brings in shifts of green and brown. And you can tap this on with your finger, and I find that it also applies really nicely with a brush. So I'm just going to take this, and it layers over the green really nicely, and you can still see the green poking through. I'm going to go over that in the center. I'm going to blend it into that dark color spider just a little bit. And that's it. You have two beautiful looks in minutes. Now the other color 
I really would like to show you all of them and looks with all of them, but for the sake of time, I'm going to have to pick. And I'm going to choose Fire Butts, which is another metallic, has a little shift of green in it. And I'm just going to pat that on the inner corner. Getting that perfect because I'm working with one hand here, but I think you get the picture. So I am going to go off camera. I'm going to put on my mascara, my eyeliner, and then I'm going to come back and give you my final thoughts. Be right back. So here we are with the final look. I think these are both really pretty looks. So while I'm giving you my final thoughts, I thought that I'd go ahead and swatch after all some of these. I'm going to put this in a clip. And we're going to swatch right here where you guys can see them. So this is the color web. This is white. Kind of icy looking. And we have the matte in the color tree hopper. Then we have the metallic in the color fire butts. One of my favorites. I don't know if you can see those with the light. Then we have the color walking stick, which is another matte brown. Then we have the Pretty Duochrome Scarab. Then we have the color Flutterbee, which is that pretty peachy orange color. I <laughs> my swatches are not straight. Then we have the color BB, which is kind of a gold metallic. Then we have the color Mantis. Then we have the color Meadowhawk, which is a metallic. Then we have the color Lovebug, which is so pretty. This is kind of a mauve color. Then we have the color Jewel B. Jewel B is the only one in the palette that I find does not have a lot of color payoff. Then we have the color Marvel, which is another metallic. Then we have the color Death Moth, which is a matte brown. Then we have another one of my favorite colors in the palette, which is the color Bugaboo. Look how pretty this color is. It's kind of like a deep burgundy. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. And then we have the last color in the palette, which is the matte Spider. This is just that dark, rich brown. Any swatching errors are due to user error and not the shadows. My forehead is a little shiny because I have all the lights on in here and it's hot. So these colors are beautiful. And even the one that doesn't have a lot of color payoff pigment can be built up. So let's talk about the price. This palette comes in at $1.73 per gram. That's actually a pretty good price. So the palette itself for 15 shades is $52. The pans are a really nice size. So you get 15 large size pans. And how does that compare to other similar palettes on the market? I don't have any that I can say line up exactly point for point with Sydney Grace. I think really of all the palettes that I use, I think the Sydney Grace formula is one of my favorites out of all formulas. I think Pat McGrath's formula would beat out this one, but the price point is in a whole different ballpark. I think it rivals Natasha Denona. I think that it probably for me beats out Charlotte Tilbury. I like this one better than the Wayne Goss palette, even though I do love that palette. So Tiny Marbles, which is this palette, is coming in at $1.73 per gram. Wayne Goss is coming in at $3.40 per gram. Natasha Denona's Bronze Palette, which is another one of my favorite palettes. That's her $65 mid size pan palette that comes in at three dollars and 38 cents per gram one of the anastasia beverly hills palettes that i have recently purchased came in at four dollars and eight cents per gram charlotte tilbury's 
four pan quads came in at a whopping $10 per gram. Juvia's Place, the minis, I just ordered the three minis. Actually, I have those in. I just haven't had a chance to film them yet. Those came in at $1.01 per gram. So that's a little less than the Sydney Grace formula. And we know that Juvia's Place has a great formula also. Those palettes are similarly constructed. They have nice artwork on the cover. They don't come with a mirror. And I don't think that the quality of the pigments compete with Sydney Grace's quality. Although I do think that they are a very good value for your money and that they are good quality pigments. Those are probably the second closest in price to this collab with Sydney Grace and Mel. So the ColourPop, which is another popular line that's known to be affordable, that comes in at $1.63, if you round up, $1.64 per gram. So you have Mel's Tiny Marble Palette at $1.73 per gram, and you have ColourPop's palettes at $1.64 per gram. So for less than $0.10 cents more a gram, you're getting a quality. I think that is really extraordinary. Too Faced came in at $2.87 per gram for the last palette that I bought from them. And I think you're getting quality for your money with the Sydney Grace and Mel Thompson collab with the Tiny Marble palette. You do get a lot of kick up in the pan. These shades, when you swatch them, they really just kind of buttery. You do see them kind of create texture in the pan. So your pans are a little bit messy. That does not bother me in the least. I think that you get extraordinary quality. You get a very fair price point. And I have to tell you that this palette has just been fun. I'm picking up this palette over other palettes every day. And I think that this is the perfect palette for somebody who's looking for color, somebody who has a lot of makeup skill and can really punch up these looks. But it's also great for the everyday woman who is not skilled in makeup and just wants pretty colors on her eyes. You can make these looks as simple and fast, five minutes out the door, or you can make them as complicated and dramatic as you want to. They're fun to play with, they're fun to wear. The wear time is about eight hours, six to eight hours, with very little fading. After the eight hour mark, you're going to get some fading in your look. It's not gonna look bad. It's still gonna carry you 10 or 12 hours, but after the eight hour mark, you are gonna have a little less impact than when you first applied it. I do find that if you add in a primer, like my ABH primer, or my Fenty eye primer, or the Hourglass Eye Primer, I've tried this with all three of those, that you do get a little bit more wear time out of them. So that's all that I have to say about this. I hope that the information was helpful. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel. I'd love to have you as part of the family. Until our next video, stay safe and live like Mel.